Recent developments in seismology have opened many avenues for understanding pre-seismic events. Perhaps the most outstanding idea has been pursued and elaborated by Finkelstein and Powell in 1970. These scientists have suggested that during the strain of seismic pressure, forces pushing on rock crystals in a large area produce electrical fields through a modification of the piezoelectric effect. These pre-fracture electric fields can reach values of several thousand volts per meter. Intensities capable of ionizing the local area into visible luminosities. Indeed, one of the more constant contiguities of unusual events has been between earthquakes and luminous airy displays. Interesting stuff, isn't it? I'll, I'll go just a little bit further with it. The extent of these fields may be by no means small. Consider the large subsurface regions, perhaps hundreds of square miles in area, with near fracturing forces pushed upon them. The resultant electric and magnetic fields produced could involve large volumes of space reaching high into the ionosphere. About one hour before the Hilo Hawaii quake of April 26, 1973, radio transmission ceased due to the apparent disappearance of the ionosphere. What extraordinary electric forces must have been generated before that fracture? Such well, forces may accumulate for weeks or perhaps even months and may be expressed in a qualitatively different fashion since the quantal sums of energy required for a fracture would not have been reached because the electrical field produced by the accumulating strain is not sufficiently intense to permeate large areas of surface space, it is concentrated into the most susceptible localized area. The result, the net result, is an electrical column. Now, during the pre-fracture sequence, or alternatively, as long as the particular stress is maintained, a number of interesting possibilities could take place. First, due to high electric field, the high electric field in the localized area, low level ionization of the air within and adjacent to the column could occur. It is important to realize that the electrical field column hypothesized is not refrained from movement. In fact, its spatial dependency would be primarily determined by the subsurface forces producing it. If the subsurface stress is moving along the fault line or rift, the concomitant surface manifestation would also move in a similar manner. The actual shape or physical dimensions, that is the height above the ground, would depend wholly upon these forces and their interactions with the characteristic electrical properties of local structures, including large buildings. Hmm. Interesting stuff. And I'm going to share a screen here showing a, an illustration from the book um, of the hypothesized electrical field column and it should be coming right up here oh man <laughs> as it says an electrical field column produced by accumulating tectonic stress in subsurface regions now again here's some of the key ideas of what we were just looking at the idea that it's subsurface forces stresses within the lithosphere that is producing these electrical field columns as a consequence of the piezoelectric effect, which is when you put pressure on crystals, it generates electrical fields. The other point is that these fields are not necessarily stationary. They might move. They might be transferred along uh, fault lines or fractures with uh, movement of stresses through uh, through the, the plates of the lithosphere. The third thing is that there may be a means, natural or otherwise, of concentrating or magnifying these fields. And again, as they made the point here, uh, that uh, it could 
include large buildings. As it says here, depend wholly upon these forces and their interactions with the characteristic electrical properties of local structures, including large buildings. Wow. Could that uh, include uh, temple structures of old? Mm. Could it include pyramids? Uh, could it include, yes, why not? Um, <laughs> Man. So I would just like everyone that's listening to understand that this is Randall saying that he didn't have anything to say about this particular incident. This is what he says when he doesn't have anything to say. So just wait till he actually studies it. <laughs> and then we'll hear what he says. Because <laughs> when we were first talking about this before the show, he was like, well, I don't, I don't really have anything to say about that. So this is him having nothing to say. That's, uh... Well, then, then let me um, conclude with um, what else I don't have to say. <laughs> As it says here, the existence of electrical columns produced by accumulating tectonic stress would affect living electrical systems as well. Recent experiments indicate that animals may be sensitive detectors of electric, magnetic, and infrasonic fields. Science is still not clear how animals detect ambient fields, but some species seem to use them for migration and perhaps even communication. Man. So, yeah, and that's where, it, to me, it really gets interesting is this, uh, you know, living electrical systems. And, th and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it with this because this, I think, uh, opens the door very suggestively to, to some possibilities here. Perhaps the most complex bioelectrical system of all is man. Yeah. Within a small three-dimensional locus called a body, unfathomable ensembles of electromagnetic circuits exist. These circuits are correlated with experiences of consciousness, memory, perception, and all the various properties labeled human. Typically, human bioelectrical field patterns are displayed in a systematic manner and consciousness and thought to flow in a perceived orderly manner. But even this system is not infallible. Experiments by Leduc and more recently by others, indicate that small currents induced across the scalp can produce dreamy-like states, episodes of paralysis, or intervals of unconsciousness. Certain combinations of electric current polarities and intensity seem to influence the DC battery or steady state potentials of the brain. Ironically, one of the most electrical Electrically unstable parts of the human brain is the hippocampus, an important component of the emotion and memory circuit. If this system is stimulated, even in the waking state, the person is inundated by stored images, real or unreal, that he or she cannot control. The stimulating currents are not very large in magnitude and could quite possibly be induced by transient electrical fields allegedly produced by substructure geological stresses. The implications of this supposition are immense in scope. And I think this might provide actually a key to understanding uh, certain aspects of the ancient science. Yes, that's... But not only were the ancient master builders and architects, great engineers and, and, and geometricians, uh, they were all, and astronomers, they were also sophisticated geologists. <laughs>